Hi, everyone. I'm really glad to share my daily experience with Trey. I'm a senior software engineer, and um, I'll be more practical compared to the front end guy in front of me. <laughs> he definitely have a lot of knowledge on how underneath the co-agent works. So first comes to the challenge. Um, I believe all of you have seen um, flashy AI demo, like landing page or like quantum collision animation videos at the very front. That's uh, definitely focusing on the from zero to one uh, web page building, but that's actually not what we do for real work every day. This is a picture that I prompt the Google Gemini model to generate. Is definitely what I see is a real world complexity given the production wise um, large repository that has tangled dependency, nested classes, and files with hundreds or thousands of lines per, per each one, complex module interactions, and legacy code desperately need refactoring. The problem is, as a lot of us talk about, is about the context that it takes the limitation bottleneck because often the entire repository are too large for AI models to um, consume at once or digest at once. Um, AI only see a keyhole view of your code base. Missing critical relations between uh, the components for each module or each method, function calling, find usage, like what human would do in a JetBrain IDE. So processing the full repository for now is something models are not able to commit. And that's something we should realize during our daily work that when we are working with um, AI IDs like Trails. The solution com comes with a mindset, working with limitations. Boundaries, ooh <laughs> So the collaboration is don't try to make the AI understand everything at once. Focus on specific parts of your code base like what Zach just talked about. Yeah. <laughs> um, giving really simple but precise prompts every time and finishing um, simple tasks that are under your control. Think of AI as a smart program who needs more directions. I will give you an example of my daily work prompt. So on the left is how, we, how I prompt with Trey. Um, modify this file, quote, um, at the file and implement a similar one in a designated module or places. So this is more like a um, few shots learning that you actually help the model to understand your code style, um, internal libraries, and uh, implementation logic behind that, and let it to replicate another one with a new function or new, new name. Here comes the tray features. Um, Ember talked about a lot. I'm gonna focus on my real usage uh, examples to how do I utilize this function from agent, context, MP, NCP, and rules. In my mind, agent equals planning and actions. And for each of the two steps, I believe there are ways that people can work better with agent to help them doing a better job. Planning is definitely I guess the most important stage every time before the AI agent start execution. And the important key parts here is human in the loop. Uh, on the left side, we have the Trey solo mode. I think this is where Trey really gives a good example at, the, at their designing for, the, for these cases is for a complex problem, it will always ask your consent or confirm before it do the execution. And it also gives out the to-do list, as you see on the right, five tasks is that make sure that you understand the intention of AI coding before you execute it. If you're not familiar or if you're not comfortable, unhappy about any of these tasks, you should let the AI know. Update the task before executions. Second thing, I think also understand, uh, answer your questions um, at the very beginning, uh, we should have a rule MD file at the root of the repository. This can come with, uh, for example, common bash commands, core file and utility files, testing instructions, repository adequate, like branching name, merge, git message, template, et cetera, and development environment setup. 
and any unexpected behavior that um, you want the AI, AI agent want to let you know specifically when encountering. For example, uh, creating new modules or um, deleting anything. So these clear information will definitely tell AI how to work better, especially work customized to your per personal preference that meets your um, code styles. This on the left is an example of the raw MD file that Trey actually support. Next thing I'm gonna talk about basic MCP and uh, uh, I think Zach shared a lot of uh, advanced details. I'm going to talk about the really basic one here. It's the terminal foundation. I think this is one of the most important MCP that most of the AI agent tools, including Trail, will utilize. It's the terminal um, because it helps to close the loop of a circulation from build command, compilation out output processing, and do it again if there's any error or any um, success status code that works out. And you can watch the whole process and kick in once you are satisfied or dissatisfied with the result. But the ability to execute the build or testing uh, terminal instruction is important to let the AI to have a self-closed loop that running for a really long time and generating new things. The next thing is also my most frequent used one. Uh, with the Git. So if you think about it, like previously, I'm a lazy developer who doesn't like to write a Git commit message every time and always get blamed by my colleagues and the future myself. Because if you look back to your code commits, you don't understand what's going on because you only leave a message called commit or initial or <laughs> anything. But now I never write a, Git, my, a commit message anymore, but Instead, I use the git sum and the commit prompt. And this is a really useful one. It comes with the trade agent will try to use, utilize the git div uh, command and try to analyze the div in your staged git workspace and summarize it into a meaningful git commit message following the previous rule MD file that you defined and commit by itself. And uh, this is really powerful, and I first find it, learn from others, and recommend everyone from our team to use it. And now we have a cleaner Gitter tree than ever in our uh, code repository. Okay, beyond those two basic ones, I'm going to talk about, a little bit about some of the advanced ones that I have. Um, one of it is the, is the basic D2C, Design to Code uh, Practice. Uh, as here, um, we want have, because most of the design starts with designers in their files in the Figma page. And it's actually a pretty good golden source that contains a lot of um, layouts, uh, actual pixel data, as well as the elements. So it is important that if we can throw the link of the Figma file into your agent and let it to build, whether it's a front end uh, layout or a client side layout directly. This will be so meaningful and save a lot of time. And luckily, um, Trey are able to do it. This is one example with the Trey solo mode, where you have, when you have a proper authentication, you can throw your um, Figma link code to the Trey and ask it to create a web front page directly. And it goes really well uh, in my case, and I would highly recommend you to try that out next time. Uh, more than MCP is the web page inspection. So I use the word to allow agent to actually see the web page. Um, clarification is not computer visionary analyst stuff. It's actually a like a Chrome inspect tools where um, the agent can inspect the DOM tree from the front page and understand and interpret the layout. And that's also something that included in the trace solo mode where you have the inbuilt browser and you can inspect the elements and point to anyone that you want to change. I would personally believe this gives an eye, not a full eye, probably one, one eye only <laughs> to the AI agent um, to help it to assist the development of the front end uh, project. Last but not least, uh, I would like to share some of my thoughts on the vibe coding stuff. It has been a very 
hardware, especially in the SF area when it's first introduced by Andrew Capathy. Vibe coding is, looks really cool and fun, but um, I, I think it comes with a hidden cost. I would call it with a new technician debt because uh, running AI generated code without human review definitely introduce unforeseen risk, bugs, security flaws, and poor architecture that accumulate silently. Um, so you write fast now, but create future slowdown. Instead, um, I create a new word on the opposite side of vibe coding. <laughs> it's called trace coding. So if you look at the coordinates, um, I measured the way of coding by maintainability and user involvement. Uh, vibe coding is definitely something on the uh, lower left part with minimum user involvement, and, but also minimum maintainability in the long term. Trace coding is something on the opposite side where you uh, have step-by-step -step review and testify for each code that you, uh, the AIID generates. Um, it is sustainable for production system, especially if you're working for a big company with the existing code base for very uh, big and large files. Uh, I think trace coding is definitely some of the practice you should adopt. Um, ideally, uh, give, with the growth of the LM models underneath, as well as the agent that we have right now, we hope, I hope we can achieve someday with the AGI coding. It's something on the upper left with minimum user inv involvement and the biggest maintainability in the future. And this is an open question to me, also to other people. Uh, so when we talk about the maintainability right now here, is it maintainable by humans or by the code agent itself? So that's an open question. That also relates to uh, most of the software engineer like myself do we, are we going to lose our job in the uh, next three or five years if we really have the AGI coding in the future? Personally, I'm pretty optimistic because uh, uh, if not writing code, we, there's still a lot of other things we can do. But probably the whole job market will be decreased at that time. So please don't come too soon. <laughs> and uh, overall, I think it's all about the taste. So the taste means your understanding, your original um, tech, uh, ability and architecture and your instruction to the, to the AI, the better you are, the, AI, the better job that AI can output to you. And that's my experience with the tray. Uh, I hope it becomes a real AI engineer better and better. Thank you. <laughs> and I also share some of my um, uh, technical blog on the linking and please connect with me and uh, hope to learn from you as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for the amazing sharing from Julian. So do we have any other question? So three Q and then we also going to have amazing swag. Okay, let's do it one by one. Uh, yeah, thanks for sharing. So one question is that when I also use those quantum coding tool, vibe coding tool, is that what I feel is that, you know, AI coding is very easy to do something from zero to one. Uh, you tell them, and especially it's very, very good at uh, developing some front end, those kind of things. But when you make your project much larger, especially work with a big uh, project uh, code base, uh, definitely it will lose a lot of context. So uh, I know it's a very, very challenging problem, uh, but do you have some best practices when you deal with this kind of very large code base? Let's say uh, you will follow some internal practice and you will tell the code what's the, you know, uh, why there is an inherent design for this, or you, you just manually write some prompt, or, or do you have some, first do you have some best practice, or how to teach AI to better work as something not from zero to one, but to follow best practices. The second question is that, um, do you feel there are some model that is good at it? Let's see what open air models, let's say GPT-5 or let's say cloud, uh, maybe 3.5 or 4. Point, what kind of model, group model. Do, do you, can you share some, your, your personal experience, which model is good at what, or et cetera, yeah. Okay, thanks for asking. Um, first, for the first question, personally, uh, I still want to mention the importance of um, the rule MD file. So it's not actually not only a rule, is giving your prior 
knowledge as a human engineer to the AI for every beginning. And this file definitely attached every time when Trey is trying to understand and generate new code and answer your questions. So for example, here, um, when you write the repository, uh, co uh, the core files and utility functions, uh, I'll give one example. So uh, I work on a customer-faced app a lot, and um, a lot of time we need to write A-B testing codes. So the A-B testing code is essentially classes where you receive uh, A-B value from the server and decide behavior on the client side. And these always have a similar template with just different name and a little bit of variations. But it does use the internal library for the A-B testing. Um, for, so outside modules like um, Sonnet 4 or um, GBT5, they don't know the style of how our internal uh, A-B testing code works. But uh, for the rule MD file, I'll definitely give an example of uh, A-B testing code. And next time when I ask him to create, it definitely refers to the, temp, uh, to the example file provided here and try to create more variation given different value. For example, sometimes I give an int, uh, integer value, sometimes I give Boolean value, sometimes I give a string value. So it is smart enough to generate different variation, but it's not smart that much enough to import the right library in the APT testing file. So I think that's something uh, a rule MD file will provide in this case. Also, the broader question that you ask, uh, how do we work with a very large existing code base, right? So my, uh, my personal experience is uh, you have to, sometimes you need to do some pre-research yourself instead of relying on the deep research function of the AI itself. Because um, one of the core problems the AI agent does have right now is it lacks of the ability that human user can see within the help of IDE, especially for example, if you're familiar with the JetBrain stuff, because you can find usage for a lot of functions. You can search and find in place. You can have a complete direction dependency of each module and each class. But the current AI system does not have that information. So my experience, I would do a um, brief lookup using the IDE myself and point to the files that are related to the problem and the AI can help to build a better connection for there to understand. So this is a limited but precise context windows when solving the real problem in a large uh, repository. And okay, the, third, uh, the second question, I don't have a lot of experience switching from different models, so I, probably I cannot share more. Yeah, thank you. Uh, lots of questions. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Um, I really appreciated how you mentioned technical debt and that idea of that. And I was wondering, what is your workflow for reviewing every time you enter a new prompt? Like, do you do it, like, do you use other AI models to review your code or do you do it like manually, like yourself? Yeah, that, that's a really great question. Um, for me, there are two types. Practically, for small lines of change, I just read, uh, as we all do. And the second one is something, I haven't put it here, but I would like to share more. I think the evaluation stage for each AI January code is very important. It's almost as important as the creating stage. And I'll give an example. So uh, we, there are different types of repositories. Some are front end, some are, are server side. Um, for the server side, evaluation could be easily done by writing unit tests. And I think generating unit tests and let the agent verify itself is a a uh, viable approach. For the front end one, we should utilize uh, tools like this, like the inspections. You can see it yourself, and also with some MCP, um, the agent can inspect the dorm tree and figure out if it's correct. So I think these two evaluation seeds are equally important every time when you accept the codes from the AI and decide to come before you decide to commit. Yeah, that's my experience. 